Okay, I'm uh, calling meeting to order. <clears throat> and uh, John, would you take the roll call, please? Uh, Jessica Abeza, Charlene McLean, Present. Sarah Neville, Present. Alan Million, Present. Mimi Rankator, Present. Sarah Rich, Present. Khalil Sadiq, Present. and Tuck Willis. Present. We have a quorum. The uh, first order of business is the approval of the minutes from June 28. Uh, which were sent to us, and uh, so I'll entertain, unless anyone has additions or corrections, I'll entertain a motion to uh, waive the reading and approve the minutes. I will make a motion to waive the reading and approve. Thank you. Second? I'll second that. Is there a, is there a second? Thank you. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the uh, first order of business is case 20 uh, 2022 14 at 62 Washington Avenue. The uh, petitioner is Bellingham LLC. Good evening, everyone. David Mindlin representing the petitioner. And this is Rob Wallace, one of the partners in the ownership group at 62 Washington Avenue. Um, very briefly, this was one of Jonathan Marcus's properties. Um, it's a seven family at the present time. Uh, there's an office on the ground floor, which was uh, Three Hills Realty, Jonathan Marcus's real estate company, management company office. The present owners really have no use for the office space. Um, they've tried to rent it, and it's just not a desirable space as an office space. They have submitted plans for a beautiful three-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment there. It's one property away from the Silver Line, the stairs going right down. It's right on public transportation on Washington Avenue. Um, the main issues are open space, and there's nowhere to add open space without taking away parking, and there would be some degree of parking relief required. There is parking in the back. It's accessible through a shared driveway on the right side of the building, I believe. Right. Um, so again, any additional burdens on the community would, or on the neighborhood and the area would be minimal, and it would be maximizing the use of a space that right now is not not productive. How many square feet would the new unit be? Excuse me? How what many square feet would the new unit oh. be? Do you know how many square feet? Six. Six. Yeah, I didn't see it on the, the materials that we were provided, like a total square footage mm -hmm. amount. Um, you know, the dimensions for each room were provided, right, but right, I, see that. I am not a mathematician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. It's I a good sized it. unit because Funny that they would it's include a that. Please, um, please speak into the microphone. Please, please speak into the microphone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's funny that they wouldn't include that on the plans. I'm happy to do a quick calculation. Um, 120. I mean, in terms of eyeballing it, I'd say it's about 1,100 square feet. Okay. There's 400 square feet in the three bedrooms. And there's about 600 square feet in the kitchen, living, dining, in the two bathrooms. Okay. Thank you. And there are how many entrances into the unit? Just the one? In this unit or in the other units? No, in, into this new apartment, the, the proposed the new, new apartment. 
how many but how many the entries? entrance into the the apartment itself it will use the existing office entrance yes yes there is if you look at the building from the street there's a a walkway mm -hmm. on the side of the building that goes directly into okay. the building. And where is trash storage for all, for the building? It's um, in the back. I believe there's like a shed, and it's in the back underneath the parking lot. I think it's covered. And it's of a size sufficient to accommodate this new addition? Yes, yes. We have a decent amount of space on the back of this building, um, which is the kind of a parking area, mm -hmm. which is a nice a nice uh, amenity of this building, which we liked. Uh, so there's okay. a decent amount of space there. Yeah, there's no addition, there's no change to the footprint whatsoever. Oh no, I understand that. Okay. I'm yeah. just curious, you know, that with a new residence, which produces, can, I mean, particularly a three bedroom, I mean, that's gonna produce a decent amount of trash. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to know that uh, the existing facility for uh, for people to take their trash out before pickup will be able to accommodate it. Yep, yep, shouldn't be a problem. There's absolutely enough space in the rear of the building. Mm -hmm. yep. I thought I had a clearer picture of it, but we don't. But again, the parking sort of, you can see the parking plan that we submitted, it sort of rings the building and then the back of the building has plenty of room for trash and mm -hmm. whatever else is needed. Um, I have a question about how this tenant is gonna get to the laundry room. Do they have to go outside? They would have to go outside. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. And it's gonna be rented? Either rented, way? yes. Yes. Are the other units in the building rental? I mean, this building is yes. a rental this property. This is a rental building. Okay. We're, we're an investment company. We own rental property. And just out of curiosity, um, it's all market rate? It's all market rate. Okay. I mean, we obviously market rate. It's not project-based, but we accept uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if we have any Section 8 in this in this building, but we accept okay. vouchers. Like I said, I was just curious. I yes, mean, that's yes. not Absolutely. something that yeah. would factor into yeah. the decision making for, for this it. project, but I was just curious. Sure, sure. Yep. Anybody else? <coughs> Excuse me. Motion. I motion to pass it. I like that. Subject to the usual conditions. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the conditions I have are applicable standard conditions and complete removal of all signs relative to the previous occupancy. What's, did you get that? So the real estate signs that were up there, you just understood. All office signs, you take them down completely. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Otherwise, I'll, I'll second the motion. Uh, okay, Maiden seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next week here at the zoning board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, okay, case number. Um, 2022-17 at 120 Bloomingdale Street. The petitioner is Andrea Garcia. And here she is. <laughs> just, uh, Andrea, just describe your project and uh, what's going on. Yes, so good evening to all the members. Um, I'm Andrea, owner of 120 Bloomingdale Street. 
Now, the project is, um, I have extended the existing foyer. It was a three by two, um, a very small, it was a very small space, as you can see in the pictures, and then there was just two concrete steps. I closed on the home in January, and around February, there was a very big leak in the basement, which is my unit number one, because it's a three family. So the basement unit, it was leaking right under this structure, this whole, um, right up to where the sidewalk is, to where the foyer starts. That's my bathroom downstairs. That whole, that's my shower and where my toilet is. That's my whole bathroom. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a huge leak. There was dead rats in the ceiling. The, the shower ceiling just like bulged and fell in a matter of, it was, I think it was snowing. It had snowed prior. So the water was probably just accumulating and accumulating because all of this was rotten once we uncovered the main um, foyer, like the plywood. There was not even a floor. They just had covered it with carpet. Everything was rotten underneath. And um, in that occasion, I guess all the water accumulation and that made all the ceiling tile fall off. The sheetrock was molded. Everything just came down, crumbled. So what I had done and I had, um, I had spoken to, to one of the building inspectors. He said to fix it, but I, whenever we went to just uncover everything, everything was, like I said, rotten and molded and just there was no way to leave the existing structure because the water and snow that was accumulating on the front area, on that front concrete like slab that's there, it just sits there and somehow it seeped and just kept seeping underneath. So I extended it now up to right, like to my limit of the, um, of the sidewalk basically, right up like my property line. So now it's a four by eight foyer. Um, and that was the existing foundation. This is what it looks like now. It's a four by eight space. Now this is a lot more eye appealing, yes, than what it was. Um, my neighbors, they all love it. <laughs> but, um, but now whenever it snows or rains, the water is not gonna sit in this area. And it's just common space. I'm not adding any um, like living area into any of the units. It's just my mail room, my package room, and then just for people to enter into the home. So I just hope that it gets approved and I can keep it um, because well, I think <laughs> I really like so. So you hadn't talked to anybody beforehand about, I mean, because you didn't, you're coming to us now asking for permits or yeah. you know the approval of variances in the permits Correct. for a structure you've already built. Yeah, I spoke to the building inspector and um, he had said to redo it in the same, uh, try to keep it in the same, um, I guess, dimension that it was. Mm -hmm. It is still the same width, it's just I brought it out to the, mm -hmm. I brought it out to the property <coughs> line, but um, but yeah, that, that was my reasoning for it because all of the water would just accumulate mm -hmm. uh, in that area prior and it would just keep happening and keep happening and, and that was the issue with that. It, because quite honestly, had you come to us beforehand, I would have taken issue with it being built right up to the sidewalk. Right. Um, you know, even bringing it back, I would ha at that time have suggested bringing it back even, you know, not even, you know, a foot. Right. Um, and if I may add, even prior to the way it was, the, um, it came out just to the same area. It was just that that was concrete. It had two steps and it was, and the people like, you would exit out onto the sidewalk, just kind of the same, not the same, no, but, except, you, I mean, yeah. but you have a building that's right up on the sidewalk where right. it had not been before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, it's done. Has it been inspected? It has, but of course I don't no, have the permit. No, has, has the city, build, has a building inspector been out there? Yes. And building you, inspector, sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. Building inspector, the electrical inspector, because we did run wiring um, for it, and that's uh, that permit is pulled. 
No, I but say, have they approved, have they reviewed the work that has been done? And yes, have they as signed in, off on it as being done to code? To code, yes. It, but not signed off properly on a permit card. It has not because I don't have, you know, I don't have a permit for it, but it has been verbally approved by an inspector. Everything was done to code, the rafters, the joists, everything. It's they, will, they will not get final uh, sign off until the, uh, the ZBA gives them the permit. Okay. I'm usually the last person who signs off okay. uh, because of DPW and the fire and all that. And there's DPW and fire usually put conditions on yep. it. And, and I usually put the condition that they have to address those and I'm usually the last sign okay. off. So what would happen, I mean, in this situation, it's built. Um, you know, if we now approve of the plan, um, you know, it still has to go through the other processes. I mean, I just would like assurances that everything is, has been done safe, properly and safely. Um, so if, you know, say, you know, the building inspectors go out there and find, you know, there's something wrong with the wiring, you know, after all the permits have been issued and they go out, will they go out to inspect the work that has been completed and then let the applicant know if anything needs to be redone? Yes, they, they will. They've already done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And, and they do that on a regular basis. Okay. Because yeah. I frequent, frequently, when I do my inspections, I frequently do it with them. Okay. What is the uh, front yard setback requirement for this neighborhood? Uh, I'm sorry, is it I existing non or is it already within the front yard setback and it was became more non-conforming? Right, it would be no more non It's an extension of an existing non-conformity. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the other concern is just, you know, if other neighbors were to ask if they could do the same thing and bump their house out, you know, they wouldn't be allowed to. So mm -hmm. that's the other reason is not set a precedent <coughs> for something that other people won't be allowed to do. Mm -hmm. um, that's and then the other thing I also want to add, particularly this house is, the layout is very different than all of my other neighbors. All of my other neighbors, they have big staircases, front decks, mm -hmm. and then, you know, their entrance doors. And then um, they're all very different though. They're, mine's is kind of just sitting alone. It's the only one that's that way. Mm -hmm. It um, It's very, tiny on the outside, but I mean, I do, um, and I also want to add on the inside, it's not finished. There's no sheetrock on the walls. Everything is bare as it is for the same reasoning. I just weather tight it all mm -hmm. out the out, on the outside, basically. Mm -hmm. Everything is just weather tight. Siding, hardy plank siding, um, mm -hmm. windows are weather tight, but the inside is still, you can still see all the, the wood. You can see all the, the the two by fours and everything on the inside. Mm -hmm. I guess my only comment is that it maybe um, there was some miscommunication along the way and it would be, I hope that, you know, if, if something like this happens again, um, that maybe someone from the city would kind of uh, make sure to communicate that, oh, you have to go through planning board and zoning board. But maybe they, maybe they didn't realize that you're going to change the, the, the footprint of the building at, yeah. th at that time, but mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else? Motion? I will make a motion to approve pending all conditions and processes as John has outlined. So, I mean, just so you know that, we're, you know, we're vote, we'll, I'm recommending that we vote to approve, mm -hmm. but everything is subject to a final inspection. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just so you understand. Yes. Okay. And like I did mention before, the building <coughs> inspector, he has been there. Um, electrical, I do have a permit already. No, I'm and saying they, they are going to review the work. Once yes. you are done, they will come in and review everything mm -hmm. to make sure it's all up to code and done properly. And if they find anything 
that needs to be fixed, it will be. You'll have to fix yes. it. Yes, okay. correct. Mm -hmm. So I will make the motion. I'll second, second that motion. Okay, May and seconded to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. You guys have a good night. You too. Motion to adjourn. No. Don't we have to do the oh, community developers? The oh, the continuation. Sorry. Yep. Uh, case number um, 2022 15 at 170 Cottage Street. The petitioner is the neighborhood developers. Uh, they uh, are requesting that the planning board continue its August 2nd hearing uh, to um, the August 23rd, August 23rd meeting. I'll, I'll approve it. I'll nominate it. I'll you, give it the you continue. Move, so moved. So moved. I will a second. second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The case is continued. Now, a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion that we adjourn at, what is it, 624? 23. 23. 23. Yeah. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 I need a second. Who seconded? I seconded. That's correct. Right. <laughs> Susan, Susan Campbell went to the meeting. Wasn't it?